Danny here from Cyberpower UK and I'm here with Mr. Midas. How are we doing? I am good. I am rather tired. I'm not even going to lie. I was at um, the W Hotel yesterday and I saw the unveil of the craziest Cyberpower PC I've seen in my life. I'm like, how much money was that PC? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think everyone wants to know that. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I do love uh, it's in the half ones like the RGB from. It's such a nice case. I really want one for my own uh, PC at home, but I just don't have the space. Yeah, it, it, it's massive. It, it, it thing, but I'm still happy with Harley. <laughs> Me and Harley Quinn are good. What's going on, Cyberpower Gang? That's what we like to hear. So, my first question is: Who or what got you into gaming? Ah, so old school. So I'm, I'm, I might have youthful good looks, but I'm an old man. You get me? I've been gaming for a long, long time. So my first console was the um, Sega Master System Two. Mm -hmm. So it had Alex the Kid. It was built in. You didn't even have to put a game in. <laughs> there was a game built into it. Um, that was like the first game I remember ever playing. I think though the two games that change who i am as a gamer the first one was street fire oh. going to the arcade and just hearing the loud sounds i remember dousing stage and the sounds of the elephants oh. and it was pounding out there you get me while i was waiting for my chicken and chips yeah that just that just blew my mind i didn't even know gaming could be something like that and just hearing real a doogin a doogin like <laughs> like i i can go back to that moment every time and then uh, Final Fantasy 7 is one of the games that I kind of solidify as a game that made me a hardcore gamer. So yeah, that's kind of the games that I kind of say that really brought me into this genre. Yeah. Uh, see, I really need to pick up Final Fantasy. I've heard so many good things about the game. And obviously just it, the gameplay looks incredible. But I've just never had the chance to sit down and play it myself. Well, do the remake, because the remake is easier, because the remake is, it's all voice acting, yeah. so you don't have to read like I did. The combat's all real time, so you don't have to sit and wait for turn base, yeah, and it's yeah. so fluid, it's beautiful. And on PC, wink, wink, <laughs> it looks incredible. Right, so the second question is, when did you start streaming or making content? Oh, so I'm not, I'm not actually a streamer, very, very rare. So I'm a, a presenter. Oh, okay. um, I, so I've been a TV presenter for close to 10 years. I've always been a gamer. I've been a gamer way longer than I've been a presenter. And I love, I love like kind of magazine style show stuff. So I love watching like the IGNs. I love the kind of funnies, the game stuff. So all of those kind of, that's the content that I kind of consume. Mm -hmm. And... I was just frustrated of not seeing anyone that looked like me on the platforms that I watch. Not really seeing any black people on any of those platforms. But I'm not a complainer. I'm a doer. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do my own gaming show. Um, so I came up with six years ago, me and a guy called Richie Driss. We came up with a show called Games, Gadgets and Rhymes. Hashtag GGR. Where we'd get artists from the recording scene to go head to head on the latest games. So we're talking people like Big Nasty, Krypton Conan. Dave, AJ Tracy, and we produced that. And that was really my pinnacle into becoming a producer and a host within the gaming industry. And then actually being a content creator was the pandemic. Because huh. like I said, I'm, I've, I've been a presenter. Mm -hmm. I, I was producing a high-end gaming show on GRM Daily, which is one of the biggest platforms for like black music in the UK. Yeah. And we were producing very high-end content. Um, then I became a presenter on Jinx Esports TV. When the pandemic stopped and happened, everything stopped. I was literally just in my house. And for the first week, I was like, this is sick. <laughs> I was just catching up on games. But like week two, I was like, I oh, know I need to do something. I started feeling like kind of low. So I came up with this concept of the show called Too Many Games and Not Enough Time. Because as gamers, too much games, not enough not time. <laughs> Pandemics here. Everyone's got time on their hands now. So no one's got an excuse. So what are you playing? Um, I just reached out to a couple of friends and was just like, can we do like a little interview i didn't even think of it as a podcast i just thought of it i just wanted as a piece of content and that's what made me into a content creator but yeah my background in tv producing and hosting and content it goes years back yeah oh, it's really nice seeing it all come together like obviously the two worlds 
come together obviously as you said you started obviously in the music scene and then bringing over the music personalities over into the gaming world as well and kind of combining them too it's really really good to see appreciate that man thank you especially as a big fan of big nasty <laughs> <laughs> yeah nasty <laughs> he is he's one of the biggest personalities i've known big nasty for years like nice years and years and he's always been the same such a when i saw his show it made sense because that's how he used to be in the studio yeah exactly how you see him in the show is the same way in the studio anywhere you're with nasty he's that same person well i remember back in the days when he was doing his uncle pain videos and stuff like that they were like that's obviously how <laughs> yeah. i was introduced to him i absolutely loved him obviously as you say he's such a character as well such <laughs> Such a great guy. What made you want a PC then? Because I know, obviously, as you said before, you were, you were a console gamer. So what was like that bridge between, right? Because most people, obviously, they have a console or a PC. You very rarely yeah. get both. So what yeah. was it that made you kind of be drawn towards a PC? So basically what happened, like I said, the pandemic happened. I was at home and I've always been, I've been a presenter and a producer. So what used to happen is when I do a shoot, I would hire a crew and my crew would be like editors. My, I'd have an incredible videographer and he would edit, do the videos. He would do lighting. I'd hire someone to do sound. I would do the scripts. I would produce it and I would be in front of the camera. And then the aftermath part, somebody else would do it. But when the pandemic happened, I had to be everyone because that's yeah. what a content creator is. I had to be the producer. I had to be the script writer. I had to be the editor. And it's mad. You see, when 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 I first started making content, I was for a green screen. I was ironing a blue sheet. <laughs> I was ironing a blue sheet, hanging it over my wardrobe. I had the worst little ring light from um, the worst little ring light from from Amazon and and some cheap microphone. And the only thing that I had that was good is I invested in a Canon G7 Mark II camera. And literally I was doing that and then I was editing everything on my MacBook. Now, I've always been an Apple guy for years. Um, anyone can tell you editing on a MacBook laptop is the most headache ever. Like it was so, so hard. And then obviously as a presenter, when the pandemic happened, all of the companies had to figure out how to do new things. And everyone started to kind of um, emulate the... Um, Nintendo Direct Formula oh, okay. So I was hosting Events digitally But my Mac couldn't handle that yeah. So I used to always have to go somewhere Like um, Jinx used to be nice And they used to let me use their room sometimes I was working with Red Bull They lent me a PC So I was using I was always using other people's equipment To be able to do these kind of um, Digital events And I was like do you know what Um this is becoming part of the new formula and no one knew when the world was going to kind of open back up yeah. and i was like no i need that to be able to be the efficient presenter and content creator that i am and then i always wanted to try out that pc gaming like pc gaming has always like the pc life has be always been a bit daunting when you're a console gamer people are like oh the pc gamers are superior and they you always kind of look down on and i've always kind of wanted to experience it and it's funny because most people who've got pcs they're going straight to shooters first thing i went to is final fantasy <laughs> get me i was i was like 120 frames per second on final fantasy like with cloud strife and stuff um so long story short like the pc for me has become a pinnacle part of my life in terms of a creator as a presenter so i edit on my pc i film on my pc um i capture on my pc like i'm able to do all of that um and i game on it from time to time but it has become very much my my work central station yeah. And it's made my life so much easier. Like, um, I'm able to do, I used to take, it used to take me say 40 minutes to render a video on my PC. It takes 15. Oh, speed. So, so, so that, so then it means, oh, sick. I can do a next video. Yeah. So like, it's made me so much more, um, um, efficient. And yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty long story short. You know, I'm a waffler. Hey, we love the waffle. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Nothing beats a good conversation. 
No, I, I, I was seven the same. Obviously, I went to uni doing photography, and again, we're doing all the Macs, and we obviously could only use Macs because that's what they provided. And I was the same. I got me student loan, and I was like, what do I do? It's like, I've got the PS4 here. Like, I could really do with something, like, so I'm not using Macs all the time. So I, I was saying yeah. straight out, buy the game PC. I was like, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was only a budget one, but, it, you know, it did the job. And obviously... It's got me to hear, so <laughs> yeah. And then he said, "It's it's that's the thing that I love about it is it is for for creators. It's specifically like it's not just a gaming machine. Yes, it's a very very good gaming yeah. machine, <laughs> um, but it allows you to be able to do everything else that you need to. And it's kind of removed away. Um, it's removed away different um, obstacles that I had th- um, that I don't now." Yeah, no, like you say, it does just make life so much simpler having everything at your fingertips. Like it is almost like the central nervous system of your life, sort of. Thing. Exactly. It's same for me. It's you always end up reverting back to the PC. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you already answered this. But what was the first game you played? Ah, uh, so like I said, it was. Do you know? Funny enough, so the first thing that I did download was Game Pass because mm-hmm. I've always been a PS playstation game on nintendo and playstation's always been my my go-to people kind of know that about me um and i've been working with xbox for the last couple of years but i've never really game game pass never really even though i know how great it is it never really clicked with me because i wasn't on it very regular but i was like no let me check out game pass on a pc and it's incredible um so the first one i played was i i, I think i just tested final fantasy 13 and I'm, I couldn't believe how good it looked. I was like, how is this 360 game looking so good on my PC? Um, then Final Fantasy um, 7 Remake. And I love Apex. Apex is my start. My, my, that's my shooter. So loads of Apex. And my secret game that's not become a secret anymore because I talk about it too much now. But I, no one ever knew it. Like it was proper my secret. But I talk about it all the time now. So I love The Sims. Oh, yeah. Like, I proper love The Sims. It's my little game. I don't do content for it or anything. It's just something that I love to play. Uh, and I was refusing to get Sims on my PC. I'm like, nope, not doing it. I'm going on my console. And then the mods. About the to mods say. got me. <laughs> and, now I'm a P- and now I'm a Sim on, on the PC as well. Downloading <laughs> mods and traces and CC. Like, who am I? Some nerd out here. You're one of us now. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is the most played game that you do play? Or um, even of all time. Oh, of all time. I don't even know, you know. So I would I would say to keep it easy, I'd say series. Mm-hmm. So I'd say the two series that are most played for me is the Final Fantasy series and Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Those are the two series that I that beyond anything. And then I would say multiplayer would be Street Fighter. I love Street Fighter. That's my go to multiplayer game where I can brag and just pump off someone's head with Ryu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm one of the Mortal Kombat guys, but uh, again, see the f- that's what I grew up on, on like the PlayStation One. So, and that's that's the thing. So, like, I love Mortal Kombat. I love I love Tekken, but I also feel like whatever was the first fighting game that got you into fighting games is the one that always stays with yeah. you. Because the amount of people I know who their first ever um, was Tekken Three on the PS uh, One, and then that's it. That is their fighting game. See, that was literally me. I think I got Mortal Kombat and then within two months I had Tekken 3 and obviously te- I put so many hours into Tekken 3 as a kid. So many. Eddie. But... Uh, I, that was me, just <laughs> Eddie, two buttons like that. <laughs> so now you've played both on PC and console, which one is better? So, do you know what? I would say it's, it's a it's a variable answer and, and I spoke about this in my video. I don't think... Like, obviously... The PC is a higher spec. Like I have a very strong PC. So f- on my PC, I've got as soon as I put a game in, I I've got a war on my PC. I go into the options, everything's on ultra. Yeah. When I go into Final Fantasy, everything's on ultra. So for my machine, which is a very high end machine, it's it's way better in it. Uh, like I'm getting better frames, I'm getting better graphics, I'm getting uh, so much more of uh, experience. But I'm always going to be a console gamer yeah. to heart. So like my experience of gaming, I love sitting on the sofa. Mm-hmm. I love to sit down and just chill, and I do really love that experience. But for what I have as a machine, 
then yeah obviously pc gaming is way better in terms of visuals in terms of style in terms of thing one of the things that i do love is i love console exclusives mm-hmm. and that's why i love playstation yeah I love the Uncharted's, I love the Spider-Man's, I love the FF7's and being able to play them on my PC has enhanced that for me. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, nev- I'm never going to be here like, the PC's better than consoles and consoles are better than PC's. I definitely think it's about where your comfort level is and also where your affordability is yeah. because if I had a... I don't know, seven hundred pound PC. Visually, it's not going to match up to my PS Five on an OLED screen. Um, so they're both great experiences. Yeah. But the what my PC can do for me, my console could never do. See, I always have this argument with my like friends because I'm like one of the only PC gamers out of my friendship group. And the argument always is, well, I don't want to use mouse and keyboard. It's like you don't yeah. have to. You can just everything's Bluetooth nowadays. <laughs> You can literally. Um, there we go. I am not a Q A S D W Don. Never. <laughs> I am for first person, sh- person shooters, man. I can't, I can't go back once you learn. I, like, you yeah, can't I can't do it. I can't do it. All of this. I'm sick. When I'm when I have to do it and I'm testing, I look like like if I went to my granddad and was like <laughs> and just gave him my PS5. I'm like, go ahead. I'm there like, go. have a go. <laughs> you literally would think it's the first time I've seen you a keyboard before. I'm like. <laughs> proper slow i can't get my brain around it so it was the same for me i, I was the same oh as i said grew up consoles playstation xbox had them all all the way from the ps1 all the way up to the ps4 and i tried i think the first first yeah, first first person shooter i got on my pc was a modern warfare and i started playing it and i sat down i was like do you know what no i'm forcing myself i am forcing myself <laughs> to play it mouse and keyboard no matter what i don't care about my kd i'm sitting down and i, I am getting good <laughs> And then, fast forward three years now, obviously the beta for Modern Warfare 2 was out recently on the PlayStation 4 release, and I managed to get, obviously, the beta code for the PS4, and I'm sat there, and I'm sat there on my controller like this, I'm just like, this doesn't feel natural anymore, I've been doing this for like 20 years, like... (laughs) And it's so funny, it's funny, because every single person I know, like I know a couple people who stream, code, or play on a professional level said the same thing to me like it was a it was a weird learning curve yeah but as soon as they learned it they couldn't go back yeah oh it, it's so strange because i was even sat there trying to like plug my mouse and keyboard into my playstation it's like this will work <laughs> it will work <laughs> unfortunately me, me uh keyboard wasn't compatible because it has two usb slots and it's just a nightmare really but, <laughs> but no so um what other games do you play in your spare time then other than obviously ones that you've mentioned like obviously your, your guilty pleasures sims but <laughs> so um it's funny because like obviously um i do a lot of content on my pc and i've actually i'm lucky enough i've got my own studio oh, yeah. so so i've got a studio that's like 10 minutes from my house so i come here work throughout the day and then i'll go home and a lot of the times if i go home like my girlfriend might be watching something on the tv and stuff so a lot of the times i'll just jump on my switch so I can just sit on the sofa and not take over the TV yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm a big RPG guy, like I said. And, you know, RPGs can be like 100 hours. So I like to play stuff on my Switch that I can just kind of um, be in the background, still be present and play. So things like I've been playing a lot of Persona 5 Royal on a Switch. I've been playing like Mario Plus Rabbids um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I've got I'm quite a variety gamer because... <laughs> I love I love like Call of Duty, like especially the campaigns. Like I love a Street Fighter, yeah. like uh, thing. But my core is big open world games. So right now I'm playing Ragnarok, which is just incredible. Um, Horizon was incredible this year. The only one that I didn't do was, um, and people are probably gonna throw eggs at me, is Elden Ring because oh. I cannot, I can't do them. I can't do them Souls games, man. I feel like I literally feel like a school bully is beating me up every time I try to play them. <laughs> I, I'm saying it's kind of the same boat with Elden Ring. I love the game. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I put probably about 40, 40 to fifty hours in when I first got it, and I must admit, ninety percent of that time was just riding the horse around exploring, just because it was such a pretty world. I was like, oh, he looks a bit hard. I'm, I'm not going near him. I'm just gonna run away. <laughs> I literally feel like Bar and Millhouse in that game. Like I um. Because I'm not really into the whole um, medieval thing. Yeah. Um, Sekiro was the first one. Like, I loved that old school Japanese. I was like, yeah, let me play Sekiro. Bam! Why couldn't I beat the first boss? 
Like, I beat the first mini boss. I wasn't able to pass the first boss in that game. And I'm I'm a gamer. I feel like I'm good. Like, I'm platinum <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake. Like, th- that game on hard mode is crazy. And mm. I could not pass this first <laughs> boss. But you know what it is as well? I'm trash at parrying. Yeah. And a lot of those games are built on parrying. And if, yeah. you, if, if you're not good at parrying, like, you might as well just allow it. Just call it a day. Oh, exactly. And then you also have to, move, like, learn the moveset of each boss and all this and it's like well there's one streamer who i think it was yesterday managed to complete all seven of um of like the soul series and those style games one after another without taking a single hit and if he you... if he took a single hit in the game he started all the series again so it's that like, is it's mad like, you're just sitting there it's like jeez how were people so he must have been on red bull coffee <laughs> everything at the same time just like amped for every movement Oh no! Well, you, you see people who are completing them on like the bongo, like the Donkey Kong bongos and Guitar Hero controllers. Or, um, I watched some lass who did a um, a no hit run while she was using a just dance mat. So she was using a dance mat to obviously control the game, and she did a, a no hit run. It's just like, how how are you doing these things? I'm sat here on a this controller. Sa- and I can't even do it. <laughs> yeah, this time I can't even get past the first boss in Sekiro on a controller. I'm so trash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are fun games once you get in there it's just if you're willing to put the grind in of like 100 hours of just dying over and over and over again <laughs> not on it <laughs> <laughs> it's not about that life not at all but um so what's your favorite game of all time because obviously i can see a lot of models in the background <laughs> um so yeah i know i keep on rinsing him so it's probably my favorite game is final fantasy mm-hmm. 7 remake yeah. or zelda ocarina of time those are the two most important games in in my life yeah. easy oh. nice see I, i've never again never played the final fantasy everyone keeps going on about it <laughs> like, yeah mate i said to. definitely try try remake mm. oh, it's, it's just worth it because remake is so it's so modern mm. like it's and it has the best combat system and i'm saying this loud anyone who wants to check me at me, it has the best <laughs> combat system Square Enix has ever done. That's that's fair. To be fair, I can't actually think of any combat games I played of hers. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like it is the best combat system in any Square Enix game. So, like, it's such a good place to start. Like, people say, no, you should go back. No, don't mm. go back and play the old one because it just doesn't age well. And yeah. and you'll go back thinking, why is everyone? so crazy about this game it's, it's obviously it's more nostalgia into it. that's what people grew up yeah. on and obviously if you played it when it was first out it was revolutionary it was great yeah. and obviously you can still go back like, and feel that sense of emotion like i recently played it again i played it on a tablet and i loved it but i loved it because i've already experienced it i know what the visuals are going to look like but for people who are going on for the first time i always say to them just go just start with remake and remake on the pc Woo! <laughs> telling you with that 120 frames on Ultra, yeah. it is beautiful. Uh, like I said, and I put mods in it. I changed up Cloud's outfit and stuff. I'm telling you, I'm a top nerd out here now. You couldn't do that back in the day, could you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, my next question is, what's what do you reckon is the longest you've actually just sat there and played a game straight without, obviously, well, we'll, we'll include toilet breaks and stuff, but literally just not leaving the house and just sitting and playing a game without sleeping? It's- so what's funny is before I worked in gaming, what I used to do when I was just in music, like I said, gaming has always been part of my life. I used to take off a week for my birthday mm-hmm. and two weeks for Christmas. And that would be just gaming. Yeah. So literally around my birthday, I might go out and stuff like that, but I wouldn't be doing any music, mm-hmm. no bookings. And then I would just spend a week just chilling, just gaming. So I remember when I first played Uncharted 2 mm-hmm. and I think... I think a, a good 72 hours, I think all I did was bathe. That's it. <laughs> and, and I ate food. But I literally just stayed in my room. And um, I think my mum was like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm just enjoying myself. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's weird because working in gaming now, like I used to associate Christmas and my birthday with gaming. Mm-hmm. Where now it's like, because I game all, all of the time because it's my job. It's kind of like, I think to myself, oh, what's my Christmas game going to be? But there's no game that really makes me feel like, oh, this is my thing. So I, I might have to start reading books over Christmas. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you want to do that, I'm, there's um, some very good novels of um, adapted from games. <laughs> I remember uh, yeah. the Assassin's Creed ones are really good, actually. Oh, is it? I'll yeah. look into that, actually. But um, So no, 
this is a bit of a weird one, and not everyone always has an answer for it. But what's the one game that you've picked up, you've tried to play, and you've gone, no, this isn't for me? It's like, what is the worst um, game you've played? So I don't. So I wouldn't say it's the worst game because I know people love it. But I would say, obviously, the Soul series. Yeah. Those are the games. Those games don't really um, connect with me. And it's weird because they're a series that because people love them so much. I want to love them as much as other people. And another one that I should make sense to me is like Watch Dogs. Like Watch Dogs just like it, it has the, the formula of like the open world and the cool mm-hmm. stuff. And I have not been able to, I think I completed the first one. And then number two, it had a black pro tag and stuff like that. And that didn't really, I was just like, yeah. And then number three, I was like, oh, this is going to be cool because you're going to have to switch to different characters. And like, I'm originally from Brixton, so you can go to Brixton. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to be able to see the ends. <laughs> and it just didn't. It just, it was just like, this just does not mesh with me. Yeah. So I would say those are probably the two series that out of everything that just, yeah, it just, it should make sense because of the kind of gamer that I am. And yeah. it doesn't. Okay, so I'm going to take it to the complete opposite side of the spectrum now and go, what's the one game that you picked up that you didn't think you were going to like but actually fell in love with? So, this is a random one. I love RPGs, as I said, but I don't like, I didn't like tactic games. Like, I've never liked strats. Strats just never connected with me. And the first strat that connected with me was Mario plus Rabbids. Like... Hmm. I can't even stand rabbits. They are super annoying. I don't like strats. And this game is basically a bite of, um, um, oh, what is it called? Ofcom. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, I'm like these, all of these things shouldn't connect with me. And they just did. And I fell in love with it. And now I play different strategy games. Like I've, I've enjoyed, like I really love Fire Emblem Free Houses. Um, I've played like Valkyrie Profile and stuff like that. So that that really jumped into me. And I think Apex Legend as well. Like I enjoy shooters, but I'm more into stories. Yeah. Um, so like even COD, like I play all the campaigns and I'll jump into multiplayer a little bit, but I just don't have time because I'm playing these big open world games. Yeah. Um, and Apex really sucked me in and there's absolutely no story in the game. There's obviously external story yeah, it's like and it's all just characters. multiplayer. Yeah, but that, like, I love that. I'm all about them dubs, you get me? <laughs> See, I loved Apex when it first came out. I'm, I'm pretty ashamed to say I've not picked it up since Octane was added to the game. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, oh. I smashed the first few seasons of it, but after that, I, I don't know. I kind of fell out of love with the Battle Royale genre because obviously you had Blackout, you had Warzone, you had yeah. PUBG. They just, it seemed to oversaturate the market. And I was just like, I, I'm done with being, especially like, right, I've just put 20 minutes into this. And I've just been sniped from like 500 miles away by someone I can't even see. I'm just like, no. see, and that's the thing because I don't, because I don't really play battle royals like mm-hmm. that. I feel like this is the first battle royale that really grabbed me. And I think the thing that I prefer about Apex over the other battle royals is you can be good and still die very quickly, yeah. and you can be rubbish and still, still win. Kills. Where yeah. something like Warzone, if you're not in from the beginning. And you're not in the grind. As soon as you come, you're just dead, dead, yeah. dead, dead. Like people learn the spawn points. Like the amount of times I've jumped into Warner on and I just get killed parachuting down. <laughs> I'm like, I can't even get in to even to even get good. You get yeah. me? Like at least <laughs> let me have some time to get good. And I think Apex has a very kind of good um, learning curve. Um, but like anything like that, any game that's been out seasons upon seasons, when you start. It's very, very rarely that anyone's able to stay throughout all of the seasons because yeah. it becomes mundane after a certain time, doesn't it? No, yeah, it really does. What I am going to ask you, is the Mozambique still a meme? <laughs> ah, yeah, always. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that, just walking past Mozambique here, Mozambique here, Mozambique. Like, oh, my God. I, at one point, I was like, I might just turn like ping notifications off because I'm sick of hearing it now. <laughs> That's hilarious. But, so um, what is it that you enjoy about the content creation then? um so like i said i i've started as a presenter and like creating i'm a creative person from the music to being presenting and i love talking about games i'm super passionate like this has been a love of mine from a childhood even before i 
ever had the inkling that I'd want to work in it. And I just love being able to talk to people about games. I love to be able to give my opinion about games. I love to be able to review. And I love to talk to people who look and sound like me. Like there's bare people who look and sound like me that love the, the nerdiest games, that love the Final Fantasies, that uh, love the Apex and stuff like that. And they're not necessarily uh, marketed to because... When it comes to marketing teams, they're like, oh, no, they only play FIFA, COD yeah. and Street Fighter. And no, like they they might be they might have bare swag and and, and drive a, a, a new A class and stuff like, and listen to hip hop. But they still love Cloud Strife yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they still know who Zach is. And I'm able to talk to them and kind of relate to them and and, and just think so. It's, it's it's really great and it's um i'm 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 super honored and, and lucky to be able to be in a position where i am well see that's what i love about the gaming community it's so inclusive that people don't realize that they think of are oh, you a gamer you know you, you live in your mum's basement you, you sit yeah. there all day and play games it's like no there's so many different cultures behind it there's so many different types of people and there's people as you said who you'd never believe were gamers or into gaming yeah. and you'll sit there and they'll start like listing out all these like specs of certain things it's like wait what I, I didn't even think about this it's like it's so inclusive i i love it and it's 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 so it's so true what you say because that it's like no one if if you met someone tomorrow and they're like oh my god i love movies i love the matrix no one would be like oh that's bizarre how come do you love the matrix and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Now, when it comes to movies no one's surprised and when it comes to music no one's surprised like you could love hip-hop you could love grime you could love classical music no one's gonna look at you like raw you'd love all them kind of music <laughs> when it comes to gaming it's like, oh, no, you can only be a gamer if you're a nerd who lives in their mum's basement. <laughs> exactly. No, if that was the case, the gaming industry wouldn't make any money. Exactly. <laughs> it would so be a broad broke industry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it would be the reason why it makes so money is because there's a broad amount of people who love it. Well, that's the thing, and it brings us all together as well. Like, obviously, well, look at us at EGX, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, for the viewers, we we went for a meal together, and honestly, it was one of the funniest times of my life. It was great. <laughs> but... Yeah, <laughs> and and the great thing is that table was so diverse. Oh, like it was. so many different, um, there was different races, different ages, different creeds, like so many completely different backgrounds, and we was all there just talking and gassing about the love of um, gaming and magic. Yeah. Randomly enough. <laughs> <laughs> big shout out to Damien <laughs> <laughs> but no that, that made me laugh actually after we left um, one of the lads turned around and goes what does bear mean I was like oh no don't, don't do this to me man like come on oh, wait. <laughs> I mean it's a lot <laughs> you know there's so many different meanings I can't go into the context of bear right now <laughs> so uh, next time I'll, I'll, I'll get subtitles under me <laughs> <laughs> no you don't need that man Just, I, I'll translate <laughs> I got you <laughs> but no so my final question is and you've probably already answered it but if you were not a content creator what do you think you would be doing oh so i tell you it was really weird um so if i if music was always the plan and obviously everything changes and now i work in video games but randomly enough if i never did if i was never creative if i never worked in music if i never think one of the things that i've always loved is advertising I love advertising, like I love watching adverts, I think, and I think in another lifetime, that's what I would do, I would just be one of them people who are doing advertising, and it's weird, like I watch some adverts, and adverts cost, especially TV adverts, cost a lot of money, oh, yeah. and I think, this is trash, <laughs> who spent all of this money on this trash it's got nothing to do with the advert it doesn't make me think about the advert who did that so yeah randomly um uh, thingy which is great as a content creator because i'm always advertising stuff yeah so yeah i think in another world that's what i would do what about yourself um oh don't put me on a spot like this Midas. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um probably the opposite i'd go down the music route if i could more than anything else i still something creative i'm say photographer now marketing and uh just to throw it out uh, if anything ever goes wrong Marius, there's always a space for you on the marketing team here at sad power <laughs> i appreciate you man. i appreciate you but no like i say I, i'm big into my music all all types i'm one of them i, I look like a goth i am a goth but <laughs> i listen to everything like as long as it makes me dance I don't care. <laughs> like... Well, well, we definitely have to go out. I need to see that them oh. dance moves. 
<laughs> like, that's the issue, though. Once they start, we don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's been an absolute pleasure, Mr. Myers. Thank you ever so much for taking some your time out your day to do this. It's been absolutely great. Of course, Cyber Power Gang to the <laughs> end. Make sure you check out my Cyber Power content. Go over to the website and you can see my um, video giving you a whole website tour. And then come over to my YouTube and check out my video of going from a console gamer to a PC gamer. <laughs>